day. No, wait, it's a great day. You see, today's a special day because I'm pumped up to introduce to you the TMAC Diamondback Rattler FPV frame. It's a lightweight, high-performance micro FPV frame with HD video capability in a dual stack configuration. Of course, in this video, I'll go over its specifications to include dimensions and weight, but I'm also going to describe my thought process behind the design, as well as the features and advantages of the Rattler. I'll also show you a completed Rattler build and finish with a short flight to demonstrate the Rattler's striking capabilities. To take a closer look at the Rattler frame after this video, I've made it available to you on my website at tmacfpv.com on the Pilot's Den page, which you can access through the link in this video's description below and become one of the first Diamondback Rattler pilots. Then you can share your Rattler build and flight experience with others simply by sending in a video clip or pictures to my email address, tmac at tmacfpv.com, for possible posting in the Pilot's Den. If you're excited about seeing the Rattler in action, head on down to the comments section below right now and type the word Rattler, give it a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and subscribe to your TMAC FPV channel, your home for your journey to better FPV fun, lights, and racing stuff. Now this entire frame kit consists of the base plate, the top plate, 6 M2 by 25 millimeter knurled aluminum standoffs, and the M2 screws required to secure the standoffs between the base plate and the top plate. It's very simple to assemble even for beginner, and I'll demonstrate that here shortly. But first, I wanted to go over its physical dimensions and features I've designed into it for you. I've captured most, if not all, of these physical characteristics and features on my website at tmacfpv.com, on the Pilot's Den page, which I mentioned previously, and you can access that through a link in the video description below. Now, I need to warn you, don't be deceived by the Rattler's apparent harmless nature while in its resting mode. I assure you, when provoked, she can be quite aggressive. Let's start with the top plate. The top plate comes in at about 2 millimeters in thickness. It's quite durable. And it weighs in at 4 grams. The bottom plate comes in at 3 millimeters thickness, which is extremely durable, especially considering how lightweight it is. Coming in at 25 grams. Now these flares which I've designed for this frame on both the front arms and the rear arms where the arms meet the main plate and it's wider at those locations add both strength and durability to the arms making the Rattler both muscular as well as agile. The width of the base plate comes in at 27 millimeters. Now the Rattler's characteristic diamond cutouts on both the base plate and the top plate are designed to both reduce weight while maintaining structural integrity and they also provide for thermal ventilation of electronic components so for example your VTX has less of a chance of overheating. Next we'll take a look at its motor to motor distances and its purposeful geometrical shape. Now before we start measuring the motor to motor distances on this Rattler frame I wanted to explain to you my rationale for the way I designed it first. If you recall a couple videos ago, I built out the POB 150 frame. and What I was looking for was a high performance frame, more like a racing style frame, that was in either the X configuration, standard X, where the distance between the front motors and the rear motors is the same, as well as the front to back distances are the same, that would be called a true X or a normal X configuration, or I was looking for a stretch X configuration where the motors in front were narrower but the same distance as the motors in the back, but that distance would be narrower than the front to back motor distances, or a hybrid type configuration where the front motors are narrower than the back motors but the front to back motor distance was at least equal to the side to side front motor distance. The only frame that I could find that was relatively inexpensive was this POB 150 frame and you saw the build in that a couple weeks ago. You can uh, take a look at that through the link in the video description below. The This POB 150 frame is actually a true X configuration where the front side to side motor distance is the same as the side to side motor distance in the rear which is the same as the front to back motor distance. There's a couple problems with this frame though. 
It weighs a ton. The frame itself does. If you want to take a look at the all-up weight for the entire build, you can check out that link in the video description below. But the actual frame itself uh, weighs quite a bit as compared to the Rattler frame, which we designed here. The other issue with this frame was it's not readily available. I ordered this from Banggood, but it actually shipped from the UAE, and it took quite a while to get to me. So that was the only X, True X, or hybrid configuration I, I could find for a high-performance type racing style frame that had a HD video capable dual stack configuration. I didn't want this type of frame. This is a Diatone GTR90. This is what's called an H frame where it looks like the letter H, but sideways, where the side-to-side -side motor distance in the front and the rear is wider than the front-to-back motor distance. Now, what this has a tendency to do is its inclination is to pitch on the pitch axis or flip this way much more so than roll. I also didn't want a compressed X-frame which looks like this, where once again the side-to-side -side motor distance on both the front and the rear are a greater distance than the front-to-rear motor distance. So those are the frames, the H-frame and the compressed X, which I did not want for my high-performance HD video-capable dual-stack frame. Hence, I designed my own, the Rattler. So now, let's get into the motor distances themselves. If we take a look at the front side-to-side -side motor distance, you can see it comes in at right at 111 millimeters. The front-to-rear motor distance, center-to-center, -center, comes in right at 111 millimeters, the same, which is good. And the rear side-to-side -side motor distance comes in right around at 121 millimeters. So this rear motor distance is 10 millimeters wider than the front motor distance. I'll go over that more in detail in here in just a minute. The diagonal motor distance from front left to bottom right, center to center, is right at 161 millimeters. Now if we draw a straight line from the front motor straight down to the rear, you can see by this grid line, which goes straight down here, that this back motor, as I just identified by measuring this distance is wider than the front motors, this back motor is outside this way of this front motor and it's actually outside the front motor by five millimeters now the reason for that is it actually reduces prop wash to the back motors from the front motors so the front motor prop wash is going to be reduced to the back motors which results in better handling and smoother maneuverability through coordinated turns as well as high performance with smooth HD video because the prop wash from the front motors is reduced to the back motors. Now these motor mounts, I did not put slots in here for the motor mounts. These motor mounts are a 12 millimeter motor mount pattern. I did not include slots for 9 millimeter motor mount patterns, which are the smaller motors, simply because I don't think that would do the Rattler justice. These 12 millimeter motor mounts are good for 13XX to 16XX motors, uh, I plan on running this off of 14 or 15XX motors. Of course, with those size motors, you can spin 3-inch props. So this frame is good as a 3-inch high-performance HD video-capable dual-stack frame. But as a bonus, because of the hybrid configuration, you can spin 4-inch props on the rear. There's more than enough room. So if you'd like, you can actually spin 3-inch props up front. You've got plenty of clearance. And 4-inch props in the rear with plenty of clearance. What? That's right. Now another feature I want to point out is that there are three different positions for both the front stack and the rear stack. So it's got more than enough room for two conventional 20 by 20 mount stacks, a GPS, and for any additional component which may become required in the future. In addition to that, because the only parts to the frame are the base plate, the top plate, and the standoffs, and it comes with these 25 millimeter knurled standoffs, six of them. If you wanted to and needed more space for some reason, you could actually go with different size standoffs, 30 millimeters in length, to raise the stack height up higher and get more room in between the base plate and the top plate. Or, on the other hand, 
Because it's already got sufficient room for two stacks, you may like to reduce the stack height from 25 millimeters down to 20 and use 20 millimeter standoffs instead to get more of a flat rattler. Now I've designed the rattler to carry a Cadex Tarzir or a split type camera like the Cadex Turtle or the Runcam Split, which is 19 millimeters in width or less, all of which I have links to in the video description below. And in doing so, I've got two different camera mounts, which I've designed into the frame itself. You can mount the camera via the four standoffs in front with two side camera mounts, or I've incorporated these slot holes in the bottom if you happen to have a camera that, that's come with this type of micro camera mount with holes in the bottom. This just sits on the bottom plate like so, and your camera fits right in between there. So you don't even need side camera mounts if you've got a bracket that came with your micro camera such as this. Of course, if you need this type of bracket for your micro camera, I've got links to these in the video description below. Or, in fact, as an optional accessory, you could use these custom micro camera mounts specifically made for the Rattler and also available on the TMAC FPV site. Or I've also included the STL file for these 3D printed custom camera mounts on that site so that you can print them out on your own if you'd like. Now these camera mounts that are specifically designed for the Rattler have three different camera positions towards the front, in the middle, or in the back. So you can slide your camera forward and backward depending upon the length of the lens from the mounting hole. And each different type of HD micro camera that uh, you may consider purchasing may have a different dimension from the front of the lens to the actual camera mounts. Now the other thing I did on this custom design for the camera mount, I've made it 15 millimeters tall. Now the fact that the Rattler comes with these 25 millimeter knurled black standoffs, M2 size, means that in addition to moving the camera forward and backward in the frame, because this is only 15 millimeters high, you've got room to move the camera mount up or down in the frame as well to more custom fit the specific camera that you've chosen for your frame. So you've got different degrees of freedom for your camera, forward and backward, up and down. I've also designed for the top plate to accommodate different camera angles, this cutout in the top plate. So as the camera is angled up, it's got room in here. As a matter of fact, let me measure this for you so that you can use these measurements prior to choosing which type of camera you want to mount in the Rattler frame. The inside diameter from this side plate to this side plate, I'll go ahead and measure, and that's coming in at almost 19 millimeters inside to inside. So the mounting holes are obviously bigger than 19 millimeters. Those are coming in from mounting hole to mounting hole at about 25 millimeters. And the distance from the back of the top plate cutout to the tip of the top plate will measure at right about 25 or 26 millimeters. So those dimensions and the other dimensions which I've previously described for the Rattler frame, you've got a good idea of the different types of cameras which will be able to fit in your frame. And the degrees of freedom which I mentioned, both front and back as well as up and down and camera angle wise. Now these custom micro camera mounts that I've specifically designed for the Rattler were intentionally designed to pressure fit the standoffs into them. So at first it may not seem simple to get the standoffs in to the micro camera mount. But what you do is you just start it with your fingertips, as I've done there, and then what I found works best for me is I just take a pair of pliers and grab the standoff and then twist it onto the standoff. Now the reason I've designed these to be pressure fit is to keep the uh, micro camera mount from sliding up and down on the standoff during flight, just like that. And uh, you can obviously move this up and down, as I mentioned, for degrees of freedom uh, vertically for your particular camera. But it's pressure fit intentionally so that this won't slide up and down loosely and therefore your camera won't bob up and down while in flight, causing jello and unnecessary vibrations to your HD video. So this is going to be a much more stable HD video with these camera mounts than if it wasn't pressure fit in this manner. 
Now, if you were to use non-neural standoffs, such as I have here with the 20 millimeter standoff, these do fit in more loosely. You obviously don't have as much uh, de vertical degree of freedom with the 20 millimeter standoffs as you do with the 25. And these do, you can put these in with just your fingertips, but it doesn't fit as tightly as with the knurled standoffs. And that's why the kit comes with the knurled standoffs. But you can use either. Now it's really simple to assemble. Anybody can do it, whether you're an FPV rookie or an experienced pilot. You just use these six standoffs and the associated screws and attach the standoffs. Now, obviously, if you're using one of the uh, custom micro FPV uh, camera mounts, whether you grab them from the site or you grab the STL from the site and print them out yourself, then the standoffs I'm assembling up front here would have the camera mounts on them already. Use these two holes next to the big hole in the back. And you put the top plate on and insert the screws. And there's your fully assembled Rattler. Now it's extremely lightweight, fully assembled, coming in at 36 grams. You've also got easy access to your electronic components simply by removing the top six screws and the top plate. And there you've got full access to all of your components. Now a short while ago on my community tab post, I posted a poll asking the question, when you're flying, do you prefer your props in view of the camera, not in view of the camera, or does it matter? And the results of that community tab uh, question were 85% of the people who responded either said no props in view or it doesn't matter, as opposed to only 15% saying props in view. I also did a similar uh, poll on a Facebook group and it had similar results. So with that in mind, when I've installed the Cadex Tarzir with the lens just inside the tip of the base plate, so that the base plate gives it some uh, protection from the tip of the lens to the tip of the props, the three inch props in the front, that diagonal line to this diagonal line on the other prop, that's a 170 degree field of view from the front of the camera to the tips of the props. Now that 170 degrees field of view, it's more than enough for the Cadex Tarzir V2s 160 or 165 degree field of view depending upon which aspect ratio you happen to be using and it's also a field of view for the Cadex Turtle and if you look most of the HD micro cameras have a field of view of 165 degrees or less so with this 170 degree field of view there should be no props in the field of view and we'll demonstrate that here shortly with our Rattler flight now I'll quickly show you the fully built Rattler and we're going to let her loose in the wild with a short flight demo showing both the FPV feed as well as the HD video.
So that's the Diamondback Rattler. Nothing to be scared of unless you provoke it. Then it can become quite painful. If you think you've got what it takes to pilot the Rattler, head on over to the PMACFTV.com site and enter the pilot's den. That's where the Rattler will be hanging out. I hope you had some fun with this like I did, and I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the Diamondback Rattler. Thanks for your time. I'll see you in the next video. Clear skies, friends.